In this corncast, we're going to finalize our different forms of a quadratic equation. So here's the process. At any given point, you could be given one of the three forms of a quadratic equation. The standard form, the intercept form, or the vertex form. And depending on the situation, you may have to go from one form to another. For example, you may be given the x-intercepts of a quadratic equation and be asked to find the vertex. So then you would need to multiply to put it in standard form. And then you'd have to complete the square to put that equation in vertex form. Or you may be given the vertex and you'd be asked to find the intercepts. So you would then have to multiply your equation to put it in standard form. And then you would have to factor to put it in intercept form. So please copy this uh, flowchart down because I think it might be helpful to you to answer the following questions. And watch out for the three dragons. They're coming after you. So here's the purpose. We want to algebraically extract information from the equation. And the reason why we want to algebraically do this is this is a good way to find the exact answer that we're looking for. In example one, we're going to be asked to find the vertex. Now in the previous corncast, we were given x-intercepts and we were able to find the equation that went through them. So we're going to be given x-intercepts resulting in the following equation. Now, since we're going to be asked to find the vertex, we're going to want to have to work our equation in such a way that we're going to end up getting an equation into vertex form. Now, we want to do this to get our equation in vertex form because we can easily get the vertex from looking at that equation. Well, looking at our flowchart, Please notice that you have to do two things to put this equation in vertex form. The first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to multiply it out to put this equation into standard form. And to do that, I like to use the area model to multiply those two binomials. So multiplying x plus 3 times x plus 1. Now instead of going over this again, um, if you're unsure on how to multiply this equation out, please watch the standard form um, corncast to see how to do that. Now when you multiply y equals x plus 1 times x plus 3 out, you get the equation y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now this equation is in standard form. Now to put this equation that's in standard form into vertex form, we must complete the square. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just show the result of the completing square process. If you need to, please watch the completing square corncast again. Well, the result of completing the square on y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3 is y equals quantity x plus 2 squared minus 1. And now, just by inspection, we can get the vertex of our equation. And again, we have x plus 2 quantity squared, so our h value is going to be negative 2. And our minus 1 is going to be our k value. So our vertex, to answer the question, is going to be negative 2, negative 1. Before we continue on to the next example, I want to bring your attention to one of the questions that is most often asked with quadratic equations. What is the graph's maximum or minimum height? Now the reason why this question gets asked quite often is because the nature of the parabola where it has that U shape always gives the graph a maximum or a minimum value. And that value is always going to occur at the vertex. Now in this particular case, we know that we have a vertex at negative 2, negative 1. And also by inspection, we know we have an A value of 1. So we know our graph is going to point up because our A is positive. So our particular graph is going to have a minimum value and not a maximum value. And that minimum value is going to be here at the vertex. Now the next thing I want to bring your attention to is what does the word height mean? 
height is always going to be the vertical distance. So in this particular case, we're trying to find the graph's minimum height, which again is here at the vertex. Well, since we're talking about a vertical distance, the only value that we really care about is this negative 1. Height really doesn't care about the horizontal distance. It only cares about the vertical distance. So to answer this question, the only value that we really care about is the negative 1. So to answer the question, what is the graph's minimum height, you would simply need to write y equals negative 1. And that could be easily obtained just by looking at the y value of our, you guessed it, vertex. In example 2, our goal is to find the x-intercepts. Now again, from our previous corncast, we could be given a vertex, and following that process demonstrated in that corncast, we could get the resulting equation. And notice our equation is in vertex form because we are given the vertex. We are going to have to rewrite this equation in intercept form. because we can easily look at our intercept form to get our x-intercepts. But again, looking at our flowchart, we would need to do two things. We need to multiply this equation out. Now the result of multiplying our equation out is going to give us our equation into standard form. And then we're going to have to factor to put our equation into intercept form. And again, if you need to look at how to multiply an equation into standard form, please watch the standard form corncast. Multiplying y equals negative 2 times quantity x plus 1 squared plus 8 results in the equation y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. And now we have to factor to put our equation into intercept form. Now to factor this, I would need to do two things. The first thing that I would want to do is I want to try to factor out a greatest common factor. Well, looking at this, notice that they all share a 2. So you'd want to factor out a negative 2. And then the second type of factoring I'd want to do this is I would want to factor using the area model. And again, if you have any questions concerning factoring trinomials, please watch the factoring trinomial corncast. The result of factoring y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6 is y equals negative 2 times quantity x minus 1 times quantity x plus 3. So now, using my knowledge of the zero product property, I know that my y value has to be zero to find the x-intercepts. So you get the equation, zero equals negative 2 times quantity x minus 1 times quantity x plus 3. And again, from the zero product property, we know to find the x-intercepts, we must merely just set the factors equal to zero and solve for x. So x minus 1 is equal to zero, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And now to solve. Well, in the first equation, we're just going to add 1 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 1. So our first x-intercept is going to be 1, 0. And likewise, in our other equation, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, and that's going to give us x is equal to negative 3. So our other x-intercept is going to be negative 3, 0. So to answer the question, the x-intercepts for our equation are going to be 1, 0 and negative 3, 0. Well, I hope that core cast went well. So instead of the three dragons chasing you, I hope you're able to chase the three dragons.